In a simple series circuit like this, it doesn't matter where we place the ammeter, as we can see if we change the circuit and then put the components on the top. We have added a second ammeter on the right of the circuit. You can see that the two meters read the same value. This is a demonstration of Kirchhoff's first law in its simplest form. If we now draw out a branched or parallel circuit, this includes three ammeters, one in the main part of the circuit and one in each of the branches. Placing the components on top of the diagram looks a bit messy, but I hope you can see how they're arranged. You can see that the ammeter in the main part of the circuit reads 0.48 amps, and the other two read about 0.25 and 0.23. If we look at the current flow in terms of the conventional current, it flows from the battery through the main part of the circuit and then at the junction splits into two parts not necessarily equal. The actual current in each branch will depend upon the resistance of the components in each branch. The reverse of this split will happen at the top of the circuit where the current from each of the branches rejoins. If we add onto the circuit diagram the ammeter values it reminds us that 0.48 amps splits into two parts which add together to 0.48, that's 0.25 and 0.23. This result agrees with Kirchhoff's law, which is normally stated like this. That is that the vector sum of the current at any point in a circuit is zero. To analyse that a little further, if the current going into the point is positive and the current leaving is negative, then 0.48 is positive and 0.25 and 0.23 are negative and the sum of those is indeed zero. Notes supporting this video can be downloaded from the website.